Namah Shivaya, beloveds. And if you ever have one of those days that you would rather fly to the moon than do yoga, which quite frankly flying to the moon sounds great right now, but you know that it would be really good for your body to stretch out a little bit, to work out the kinks of being human. This is your practice for those days that you don't want to practice. So I bow to each of you for even hitting the play button today and I promise to keep this as easy on you as possible. So begin by laying down on your sticky mat. Just lay your sweet body down and find yourself spilling out all over the floor and then once you've laid down and stretched out to the outer edges of your being then you're going to bring your arms alongside your body Take your shoulder blades down deep into your back pockets, reach your fingers down towards your toes, and then slide your legs into easy pose. And you'll just have one heel closer to your pelvic floor than the other. So old school Indian style. So your legs will go Indian style. Your arms are somewhat alongside your body, whatever distance feels best for you. And palms are up, shoulders are down and you begin to spread open the wings of your heart and just greet the earth beneath you. Closing your eyes, coming into full awareness of yourself being completely supported by the strength and the enormity of the earth beneath you. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Once again, take a nice deep inhalation. Hold it at the top, a moment of retention. Open the mouth and exhale out through the mouth. Let that exhalation be a swan dive into softening. And as you soften in and allow the earth to hold you, we just take a moment to scan our bodies, scan our hearts, scan our minds, and perhaps allow intention for your practice to rise to the surface. Inhale your sweet intentions to each and every cell, exhaling May it be so. Keeping your awareness on the interior, perhaps even practicing with your eyes closed, begin to shift legs. Whichever was closest to you, let it be furthest from you now. Second side of Sukhasana, easy pose. Just allowing the outer edges of the knees to drop down towards the floor. Every so often, you can scoop your tail up and under to make sure that you're not compromising your low back, not shortening in the low back at all, because today's practice is an offering to the low back and the hips. And then just feel whatever's showing up on the surface of your awareness by draping the shape. Just be with it. Even if it's a little bit of discomfort, just notice it. And let that part of you know, ah, yes, you're the reason I'm here. You are my guest of honor. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. I offer you my breath. And throughout your practice, any time you encounter stickiness within, a little bit of congestion or traffic, you just use your breath to see if you can encourage the flow. Last few breaths here in Supta Sukhasana. Just allowing everything to settle down within you. And then begin bringing the outside edges of the feet to kiss with the heels as close to your pelvic floor as is comfortable as we move into Supta Baddha Konasana. So the knees are still dropping down towards the floor, the outside edges of the knees, nice and heavy. And the inside edges of the feet open up like a book. 
And here it might be nice to press into your heels and pick your fanny up, scoop your tail up and under, and lay your buttocks back down. So just kind of taking the upper shelf of the fanny down towards the heels if you need to reclaim a little space in the low back. Again, staying with your felt sense of the shape and just breathing into it, softening, loosening the grip. For those of you that find this to be comfortable and easily accessible, you can just press your heels into one another and gently peel your ball edge of your feet away from each other as you just open up the feet, press into the heels. You can even push into the heels and ever so slightly lift your buttocks while dropping your knees if that feels good, if that allows you to yoke your way in a little bit more deeply to your hips. You may not need it, right? The aim of yoga is to move us into sensation and you may have plenty going on. Why would you go any further? So only if you need a little bit more do you touch and go without pressing into the heels, dropping the knees, lifting the pelvis a little bit. Do it a few times and then let that go. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Allow your knees to float skyward, your feet stand down. And then draw your knees into your chest and give yourselves a hug. Let this be delicious on your low back. If there's a little rocking side to side that wants to happen, keep it organic, keep it real. My words are always a distant second to any variations, deviations, detours that your body invites you to explore. And then from here, start working your knees in towards your armpits. So your right knee comes down towards your right armpit. Your left knee comes down towards your left armpit. So you may want to hold your right shin with your right hand, your left shin with your left hand. And just start by pulling your knees in as we slowly woo our way in the direction of happy baby. And this is gonna be different for everybody. You know, some folks have really expensive hips, really expensive knees that dictate how they approach this experience. And then from here, pulling your knees in towards your armpits, once again, rock a little bit side to side. Just massaging your sacrum, massaging the kidney band, moving some energy. And your knees are opening nice and wide. Your e knees are opening nice and wide to the best of your ability and then steady at center. And then from here, keep allowing your knees to open nice and wide as you reach your arms from the insides of your knees to grab hold of the outsides of your shins or your feet. And again, if that doesn't work for your body, then you modify and find what does work for your body. Ultimately, the highest prayer here is that as you grab from the inside edges of your knees to the outsides of your feet, if you can't quite reach your feet, no worries. You grab your ankles, you grab your shins, and if that's still not easily accessible to you, you grab the thigh just beneath the knee and you allow that to be plenty. And the goal is to start working your knees down towards the floor alongside your waist while ultimately, maybe, 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 standing evenly on the ceiling above you through the four corners of your feet. So imagine that you had paint on your feet and you're trying to make a nice even footprint on the ceiling above you through the four corners of your feet. Usually this requires pulling the outside strikes of the feet down a little bit more towards the earth and the inside edges of the feet reaching up. All right? And then once again, whatever variation you have, let it be plenty. Don't force anything. Don't ever bully the body and just slowly begin to rock a little side to side. Happy baby. Pull on the outside strike of the right foot to go to the right, the outside strike of the left foot to go to the left, and move slowly. A slow stroll through your low back. And then you're just gonna keep pulling down on the outside edges of the feet and spill your pelvic bowl backwards as if you were scooping your tail towards the wall behind you 
to slowly take you up your spine. And you only go as far as you naturally can on your own. And continue, belly button down, tailbone scooping, going as far backwards as you can towards the back door of the heart. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, yeah. So we're starting to move into the thoracic spine a little bit here. And then coming back down into lumbar. Last little bit of rocking at lumbar. And then steady here, let whatever you've got be plenty. Take a breath or two. And then just release your feet to standing on the mat. And let your feet go nice and wide, perhaps as wide as your sticky mat. And then your arms just come softly out like wings in some comfortable way. Shoulders down, down, down your back, far from your ears. The inside edges of the feet still feel parallel to one another, right? We ultimately want the knees and the hips and the toes all facing the same direction so we're not twisting the column of the knee. You feel your way into this. And be mindful of whatever your knees require. Inhale, center. Exhale, both knees to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, both knees to the right. And continue. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. One more time each side. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center, exhale, right, and park it here. And as you park it off with both knees resting to the right, you've got lots of space between your feet so that your left knee has the opportunity to drop down towards the earth, towards the sticky mat. And then you wanna be really mindful of what's going on in your knee here, okay? Be careful if you have expensive knees that have had modifications, you're gonna back off this a little bit and let, let the bend in your knee be less. So just as you need to. For those of you who are able, you're going to get a little bit of traction off the inside strike of your left foot. Gently flex up through your left heel. Get a little bit of traction there. Yeah. And you can post off the inside strike of that left foot as if you were trying to work the inside strike of the left knee down towards the mat. But then here we go. That hot union of opposites, that is Hatha Yoga. That left hip wants to pick up. See if you can still let it be heavy and drape, and you lose a little bit. And then you post off of the foot, and you gain a little bit. And you lose a little bit, and you gain a little bit, and you play with it. And you find, okay, what's the right effort? And then ultimately, if you want to, the right foot can go on top of the left thigh, just beneath the knee. Once again, gently flex through the foot, and see if you can use that additional weight to encourage the inside strike of that left thigh, that left knee to drop down towards the floor. So this is the longest muscle in the body, running from the inside strike of the knee to the outside of the hip. So your sartorius is getting a nice juicy stretch here. Be gentle, be mindful, be careful. Really close your eyes and feel that muscle and offer it your breath. See if you can traverse the entire length of that muscle with your breath. Nice, deep, juicy, dirgaswasam, your three-part breathing. And then for those who want the full Monty, your arms can go long overhead. If your shoulders allow, arms go long overhead, and you grab hold of your left wrist with your right hand, and you tug long out through the entire left side of your body. From the inside strike of the knee to the outside strike of the hip, let the outer hip be somewhat heavy. The outer rib basket be heavy. Drop that left shoulder down. Drop the heart down. Lengthen all the way out through the fingers of the hand that you've caught. And see if you can just feel that highway of energy opening up and you moving prana up and down. Last little bit here. Soft tongue, soft jaw, soft eye. I'm just feeling whatever so. A very gentle practice today, as if it were even accidental. You just happen to find yourself laying on the floor and, and, and then your body started doing this. And now let your right heel slide off your left thigh and slowly come back to center. 
square yourself off as you need to. If there's tenderness in your low back, give it a hug. Just a moment to tend to what's so. And then once again, slide your feet to standing, knees bent, and your feet are a good distance apart, wider than your hips. If you're on a sticky mat, as wide as your sticky mat. Inside edges of the feet feel parallel to one another, so the big toe is moving in towards the midline. And then a little bit of tick-tock. Inhale, center, exhale to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left, and park it. And just pause here. Don't be in a hurry. It's so important that we approach our practice perhaps from a different place than we approach our lives. So we slow down a little bit here. And we let go of the destination, so to speak. And we stay in the journey. Just initially feeling your way into the sartorius muscle, staying present in your body so that right action is there, so that you practice as your own best friend, not as somebody with a to-do list or an agenda, but somebody that's meeting and greeting their body. And then you start to feel wakefulness in your right foot, maybe posting off the inside strike of your right foot to get a little bit longer out through the inside strike of that right knee. If you're on a yoga mat, reaching it towards the front left corner of your mat. And then feeling your way to the left ankle, resting on top of the right thigh, if that works for your body. If it introduces tension or stress or pain, you don't do it. That's all. Gentle flexion out through the left heel. So we're ever so slightly pulling the left toes back towards the shin, giving a little bit of flexion in that left foot to protect the knee. And then you find right efforts. How much do you lengthen and lower through the inside strike of that right knee? How heavy do you get through the outside strike of the right hip? And breathe your way up and down the length of the muscle. And then if and when your body would like you to go into the full expression, arms overhead, grab hold of the right wrist with the left hand, and tug nice and long. Just really lengthening out from the inside strike of the right knee, outside strike of the hip, outside strike of the trunk, the shoulder, through the fingertips. Opening up the highway and moving prana. If you notice your mind leaving the experience, vacating the room, just close your eyes and let sensation be your portal back into this moment. When I am in my body, I am not in my mind. I am in my body. And let that be your mantra. When I am in my body, I am not in my mind. I am am in my body. All right, last few breaths. Get really generous. Use the exhalation to escort out any traffic. And then let your left foot slide off your right thigh. And your knees then float to center when you're ready. Square yourself off at center. Just pause for a moment. Let your feet still be nice and wide apart as your knees fall into one another. Your knees stay bent, feet standing, and the knees fall into one another at the midline. And then feel your belly button dropping down towards the earth. Your tail scooping, imprinting your low back. And imagine you were holding a penny between your knees and just squeeze and soften and squeeze and soften. And just a little bit of priming the sacrum, priming the SI joint 
and as you squeeze your inner knees together, you scoop your ta tail up and under and drop your navel down. So we squeeze and release, and squeeze and release. Now squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold, squeeze the inner knees together, about 80% effort, scooping your tail, hollowing out your belly, and then release. Let that go. Take a clearing breath. And then draw your knees into your chest. Just continuing to send love to your low back, to your hips, in whatever way is needed. And then from here, steady at center and continue holding on to your right knee as you release your left foot to standing. Knee is bent and the foot is standing in your left leg. So the left knee is bent and the left foot is standing. And with that left knee bent and the left foot standing down on the floor, you're just going to press into your left foot and scoop your tail up and under. Yeah. So you just want to imprint your low back. Yeah. So we're starting with that left foot bent, left knee bent, left foot standing, just to imprint that low back to make sure that, you know, there's not any tenderness. You have permission to be here. And if you do have any tenderness, you stay here. Otherwise, as you continue to hug your right knee in, you can let your left leg go long. But I often encourage just keeping that left knee bent and that left foot standing if you have a tendency towards a strong lower dotted curve, if you tend to be sway back. And then from here, whatever you need, your left leg long or your left knee bent, and you can change it up as needed, hugging that right knee in, circle your right ankle. Hold that knee steady so we've got stability in the leg so we can explore mobility in the ankle. Several times in one direction, moving slowly. And then slow it down as you go in the other direction. And you want to move slowly, non-habitually, to see, like, is this even a circle? And we want to feel for the distortion. And slowly move through it. And then steady that. Interlace your fingers behind your right thigh. And hug that thigh into your chest. And so this part isn't as important about how much you straighten your leg as it is just getting into the knee hinge and listening to the story of the meniscus. So keep your thigh in nice and close to your chest and just straighten and bend your leg a few times. And listen to the soundtrack. Keep your thigh on your chest. So try not to lose that. Just straighten and bend and say, oh my goodness, my poor little knee, my poor little meniscus. I didn't realize you had so much to say. Offer the whole Ho'oponopono prayer. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. And after a little bit of love for the knee hinge, next time you straighten, straighten that leg all the way, still holding onto the back of the thigh. And now we start to point and flex through your skyward foot. And you're just wooing your way into the leg with a little bit of dynamic resistance. So you're pulling the leg towards you, but yet you're pushing the leg away from you. So the hands are pulling and the leg is gently pushing. And then next time you're flexing out through the heels, stay here with a nice flexion. Draw your toes towards your nose. Pull your leg in as much as you will while straightening your leg as much as you will. So really, the ultimate here is to straighten the leg and eliminate the bend in the knee to the best of your ability. And drawing the toes back towards the shin all the while to really get into the back line of the leg. So really feel that you're dialing down through the femur head while lifting up through the heel. Dialing down through the femur head while lifting up through the heel for your last breath or two. Shoulders relaxed. Shoulders on the ground if you can. Collarbones in a nice wide smile. Last little bit of claiming whatever length you can out of the hamstring. So often the hammy is part of the low back tenderness. Some believe that your hamstrings actually start in your low back. All right, with your toes drawing back towards your nose and still flexing out through your heel, keep this orientation as if you were holding the ceiling up or holding the sky up. And without changing this orientation, just fist and fan your feet a few times. So nice and long in the leg, still nice and long in the leg, and fist and fan. Keeping that orientation. Yep, there you go. Try not to change the orientation of your foot. And fist oh. Oh. and fan. See, and fist way. and fan. There you go. Nice and straight in the leg. Try not to bend the knee. Yep, there you go. There we go. And then next time you fist, fist it, stand on the ceiling and fist, fist, fist those toes. 
and then fan your toes. Spread them, spread them, spread them, spread them, spread them. Yeah, there you go. Dialing down through the femur head, reaching up through the heel, nice and long in the hamstring. Well done. And then let it go. Hug your knee into your chest. And then slowly let the leg go long. I have the very good fortune of calling these people my family. This is my mom and my sister. So yeah, I'm breaking all of the quarantine rules and touching my people. <laughs> We're going down together, y'all. All right, deep breath in, deeper breath out. And then from here, once again, hug your knees into your chest. Rock a little side to side if your low back needs some lovin's. Steady at center. Release your right foot to standing initially. So right foot stands down, right knee is bent. Ultimately, the right heel is in line with the right knee and the right hip. We're hugging that left knee in and getting some space out of that low back. And then press into your right foot, spill your pelvic bowl backwards and imprint your low back. And just see like, okay, how's my low back doing on this side? And when I draw this knee into the chest, do I have permission to be here? Can I test the waters by taking that right leg long? Try to keep that right leg in line with the right hip. It'll want to go wide. So draw it in towards the midline if you find that leg going wide. The more it is in towards the midline, the more space it creates in the SI joint. So let that right leg move to the left a little bit if you can and notice how that feels. And then again, if ever your low back dictates that you bend that right knee, place your foot to standing, imprint your low back, that's what you do as you hug your left knee in and circle your ankle. Moving slowly through this circle to feel the honest truth <laughs> of what's going on. Like, oh my goodness, when did a circle get so hard? We've all slipped off a curb. Our ankles have been through a lot. So just give a little bit of love in the opposite direction now. And then having loved on the ankle joint, hug your hammy, fingers interlaced at the back of the thigh, and you hug the hammy to the heart. Draw it in nice and deeply, and then keep the thigh to the chest and just straighten and bend the leg a few times to hear the story of meniscus here. So it's not about straightening your leg. Keep your thigh to your chest and notice what's so. Listen to the story of your meniscus. If having primed your way in, next time your leg straightens, let it fully extend. And let your fingers interlace in a way that have your shoulders down towards the floor. And your leg is pushing away from you as if it's trying to come straight up out of your hip. But your hand is pulling it towards you. So you get that dynamic tension as you point and flex through your skyward foot. Next time you flex out through the heel, draw your toes to your nose and raise the roof through your heel. And imagine that leg was a straight up extension out of your hip bone and you're dialing your top bone in your leg, the femur, down into the earth while raising the roof through your heel bone, your calcaneus. So really opening up the window of your left knee. The kneecap gently lifts up into the quadricep as you fully lengthen that left leg. Really explore what length you can claim here as you get deep into your hamstrings. Hamstrings are the foundation for the low back. You want them long and strong. Keep drawing your toes towards your nose. Reach up through the heel. Dial down through your femur head. Let it be dynamic. And as you're standing on the ceiling, right? Standing on the ceiling, drawing the toes back towards the nose. You're going to keep this orientation and fist and fan your toes. Keep that leg fully extended. Try not to let it bend in the knee. Try not to let it bend in the knee. Fist and fan. Right? Fist and fan. 
Yeah. All right, next time you're fisting those toes, squeeze your piggy pig pigs. Fist your, fist your, fist your foot. Not your face. Lengthen that leg, lengthen your left leg, lengthen it, lengthen it, open the window of the knees, squeeze your foot. And then fan your toes, fan them. Spread your toes as wide <laughs> as you can. Can you catch air between each one of your piggy pig pigs? Or is there a little bit of codependency going on? All right. Pulling back through the outside strike of the foot, reaching up through the inside strike. Last little bit of just getting as long as you can in that leg. All right, well done. Soften and release that leg. Release the leg, let both legs go long for a moment. And just check in, arms long alongside your body, legs long out of your trunk, whatever distance apart they want to be. And then from here, just squeeze and release your buttocks a few times, like two points on the earth. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold. Do the great booty, booty, squeeze. That leads into the great booty meltdown. Soften your booty, wiggle and jiggle. Just jiggle your glutes on the earth. Yeah, notice how it feels. And then let it go. Take a clearing breath. All right, we're down the home stretch. The horse smells the barn. Your right leg slides wide. If you're on a sticky mat, your right leg just stays long and slides to the outside edge of your, your mat. Your right leg just stays long and slides wide. Your left leg stays long and slides to the right and your left ankle crosses over your right ankle. There you go, and you may feel that maybe you went a little too wide. <laughs> and as your left ankle crosses over your right, drop your left hip back down to the floor. Drop your left hip down. Now post off of your right heel, pick your buttocks up, scoot your tail up and under, and imprint your low back. There you go, and lengthen back out. So the lower half of the body is moving to the right, starting to peel open the lateral edge of your left hip. And then you're going to reach your arms long overhead, modify if your shoulder requires, grab hold once again of your left wrist with your right hand, hinge at your right waist, and take your upper body in the same direction as the lower half of your body, making yourself into a big fat smile on your mat. Now just as you're heavy in the outside strike of your left hip, you're heavy in the outside strike of your left shoulder. And then let your gaze go beyond your left elbow. Turn your gaze to your left elbow to let your heart rest on the earth and breathe up and down the left edge of your body breathing the lateral edge of your spine your hip your lung diaphragm breathing into the left ear of your heart And then keep this shape and allow your gaze to go out beyond your right armpit. And as you take the gaze beyond your right armpit, imagine closing off your right waist maybe just a little bit more. Because what's happening here is perhaps a nice little squeeze for the right kidney, the right adrenal. Just a little love tap. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. Slowly release your head to center. As your nose goes skyward, release your arms. Let them find comfort wherever that may be. And then release your left leg and your right leg. Post off of the earth and square yourself back off on your mat. Just feel your way back into some semblance of center and pause and notice. What does your body ask of you right now? If there's any movement, any shape, anything that your body needs you to do, in the name of love, you do that. And then when you get permission from your body to proceed to second side, your left leg goes wide, just stays long and slides wide. Right leg stays long and slides over to find the left, and your right ankle crosses your left ankle. 
and you just go as wide as your body allows and you can post off of that heel and play with how wide you go honor what's so in your hips if you have expensive hips and just feel your way into the truth of this shape for your body and then arms go long overhead and you grab hold of your right wrist with your left hand and then once again you post off your points of contact scoop your tail up and under and spill your pelvic bowl backwards that's the most important thing here is that you've got a posterior tilt with your sacrum a posterior tilt of the pelvis so you're spilling your frontal hip bones towards your arm domes spilling it backwards scooping your tail skyward and then just as we're heavy in the outside strike of that right hip we're heavy in the outside strike of the right shoulder the right rib basket beautiful and you're just giving a nice little tug perhaps to the right arm with the left to get really wide open in that left edge of your body as you take your gaze to the left elbow taking your gaze to the left elbow allows you to really drop down through the left shoulder through the left elbow and really drop into the left edge of your body try this left yeah oh that's your right <laughs> sorry right elbow <laughs> So looking out your right elbow, getting into the right edge of your body. Oh, to be so tragically human on video. And just notice where you feel this. Is it in the outer hip, the outer diaphragm, the shoulder? Where is your stickiness? Now we'll try the left elbow, the original left. Closing off that left waist, giving a nice little squeeze to the left kidney, the left adrenal. Beautiful. So well done. Just make sure you don't end up in your low back. If that's the case, you post off of your left heel, scoop your tail up and under, and continue to imprint. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Release your gaze to center. Release your arms to comfort. Release your right leg from your left. Pause in any way your body wants you to. However your legs and arms want to be, let them show you the way. Do that. Just be here for a breath or two. Just noticing, feeling. And then slide your left foot to standing. Right arm long overhead. And as your right arm goes long overhead, left foot is standing, you roll over onto your right side. And continue rolling all the way over bellyward. And as you roll over bellyward, working your way into child's pose. So pushing back onto all fours. Squaring yourself off on your mat or whatever your surface area is. Let your knees be nice and wide. Or knees together. Really take several moments doing your best Goldilocks. You'll find that the closer your knees are together, the more space it gives your low back. The wider your knees are apart, the more it gets into your hips. But please don't ever take my word for it. Do your own research. And then find where your arms best serve you initially to back into yourself. So oftentimes it could be down dog arms, grabbing hold of the outside edge of the mat to really push the mat forward and take your hips back. You'll feel your way into you as you just allow your sitting bones to drop down towards your heels. And remember, if your body does not allow this shape, if it's not comfortable or accessible for you due to knee surgery or whatever, you just lay on your back, draw your knees into the chest, and it's the exact same pose in a different orientation. 
However, if you can, you're going to back into your child's pose and claim a last little space out of your low back, offering your forehead to or towards the earth. Those of you with neck issues, you can stack your hands one on top of the other or make your sweet little potato fist and rest your forehead there if you need your head in line with the rest of your spine to honor your cervical curve. So let child's pose be a place of rest here. Let child's pose be your Shavasana. And just feel your way into a deep bow to all that's so. A deep bow to the contents of our bodies. A deep bow to the contents of our hearts our minds, our lives, a deep bow to the intelligence of the universe as it unfolds, whether or not it's clear to us, it doesn't stop us from bowing, trusting. So soften in to that grace of, that place of grace and humility and just stay here as your Shavasana. As you take your Shava pose, I will simply bathe you in the closing prayers and leave you here to rest in peace and stillness. Namasta Sukino Avantu Loka Samasta Sukino Avantu Loka Samasta Sukino Avantu Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. May all beings in all worlds be happy and free. Om peace, peace, peace. Jai Shri Satguru Maharaj Ki Jai.